Hello, and welcome to another home studio tour, epic home studio tour. Today we're hanging out with my friend Colin, who just moved here from Chicago a little over a year ago. He's got a beautiful home studio set up in the heart of East Nashville, songwriter, producer. I'll put links to Colin down in the description. Of course, give him a follow. And of course, I wouldn't be able to do these videos if it wasn't for my friends over at Sweetwater for sponsoring these videos. This month is a pretty unique month on Sweetwater. All the gear that they like have out on display and stuff at their stores, that they use in product demos and things like that are on sale so you can basically get brand new gear that's maybe been out of the box or used once for a fraction of the price i'll put some of those links down in the description it's a great way to support the channel affiliate links sweetwater's been just been like the best partner with me and my content they let me do whatever I want and it's awesome. And of course, thanks to you, we have this cool community here of people who all engage. We watch these tours, I go do them, we get to watch them together, I edit them and then I immediately buy things that I see in their studios. So thank you guys for liking the videos, following along, sharing them with your friends. So yeah, thank you very much and let's go check out Colin's epic home studio setup. Nice to have you here, thanks for coming. Come on in, we've been in this house a year, my partner Ruby and I um, actually moved to Nashville a year ago. Found this house with the right floor plan and uh, with the studio in mind, we put this together in the uh, master bedroom. Wow, this is really, really nice. We saw the room with the vaulted ceilings and uh, the right spacing for the windows, you know, for the, for the desk and the TV for scoring and. Uh, we knew we needed a specific type of setup, knew we wanted a lot of natural light, most, most importantly, that's really big for me after years in studios, in dark rooms, I, w I just wanted it to be really comfortable, open feeling. And I do everything from writing, scoring music for commercial, TV branding, to mixing records a lot, producing music with other artists, and a lot with my partner Ruby. I produce records together under her name, Ruby Rose Fox. So we do a lot of writing and composing, tracking in here, mixing. I want it to be a comfortable, you know, do it all space where we can sit, talk, you know, work, work through our process and write together and then move right into tracking. So everything's kind of set up, like to just be able to move between different things very quickly and comfortably. We can grab a guitar, we can fire up a guitar ramp, everything's patched in, it's pedal boards. If we have an idea on piano, we can just fire up the Whirly, that's already patched in, ready to go. I have a template where all the stuff is just really ready to go, to, you know, make it easy to start an idea, because very often we'll have an idea for something right off the bat, and then, you know, whatever mood we're in that day, it like changes something, so very often we'll just like undo or change what we did the, the day before so it's really important for me to not have to set things up and move things around so you said you've been here for a year one year almost exactly yeah so moved here from chicago last may in 2022 so we just hit the one year mark and so far love and natural life and the warmer weather especially How's, how's it been working in this room versus the room you were in before uh well it's a lot more comfortable because it's a lot more natural light my favorite thing, you know. Ceilings and, are nice and high too. Yep. That's nice. Yep, it, it definitely gives the illusion of being larger and intentionally made all the acoustic panels the same color as the walls to really maximize the, the, the space of the, or the perceived space in the room. Yeah, it looks really, really great. Did you did you build all the treatment yourself or did you have someone local come in? Or so did... these, these panels are all almost entirely, with the exception of a few hand-built ones, they're all GIK acoustics. They've been great. So all these were hung. The room was designed and hung myself. Oh, cool. This was a little bit of a struggle, but. Yeah, I bet. It's actually funny that in order to do that, I got a certain ladder and then got the ladder home, realized I couldn't even get up the steps because there's that oh, yeah. right angle turn. So uh, had to improvise and come up with something else pretty quick. So we busted ass uh, to, to set up a studio pretty quick um, so I could continue working, writing, yeah. Uh, writing for TV and, and mixing for a couple clients, so uh, it all came together really quickly. And then over the course of this year, uh, made tons and tons of little improvements along the way. The sofas also pull out sofa or uh, pull out beds. So when we have people come stay with us, you know the studio also doubles as 
uh, a guest room. That's nice. Were you working in a home studio before? Or what, what, what was the situation before this? So the last two years in uh, Chicago, where I was, uh, I was in a home studio in, in a two bedroom apartment, which was great. And I loved that transition, you know, after being in studios all day, uh, away from home, you know, it's really nice yeah. to make that transition of the better balance of life and, you know, everything, just make, be able to work in the cracks and make meals and not have to, you know, do, do the whole... Eat out all day or Yeah. Yeah. That was really nice. Up until then, for the last 16 years, I was in working in studios full time. So your work is, is a mix between, like, television work and then music production work? That's exactly right, yep. Uh, so I'm... A full-time composer with Earhole Studios, we have a staff of composers where we all work as a team independently. So we'll all work on creating custom music for clients, uh, directly for their brief, for their project, not library tracks. You know, we, we compose it specifically for them. Right. We all work independently based on the brief, and then we all do our own tracks start to finish, and then present them ideas, and then Usually the client will pick one and then we start to make little revisions or then customize to the timing and scenes of, of video edit. So that's been an amazing education for me because we work in all sorts of styles yeah. and everything informs each other. You know, working in TV with voiceovers and advertising clients has given me so much more ability in working different styles of music but also get on the same page about an idea and uh, figure out how to bring someone else's idea to fruition who isn't a singer or a musician. Right. They're just speaking in terms of what they want to make you feel or... or Looking for something dark and ominous? Totally. <laughs> there's, there's definitely like a, a handful of buzzwords that you, that you get over and over, over and over. Over and over, yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a mix. Um, since moving here and setting up shop here full time, you know, having everything set up, ready to go, but also just having access to it whenever I want. Yeah. Because sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. So it's it's nice to be able to go on a walk, get out of here, yeah. take my dog to the, to the park. Um, it's it's definitely made it more fun for me. You have a really nice interior eye. Oh, thank how you. How you decorated things in here, like again, using a a more modest space and keeping it feeling open is uh, can be tricky. It's got the album artwork up on the wall, some actual artwork on the wall, but not too much. It's not like yeah overwhelming. This these were actually really lucky that I mean it's the exact same size as the, the panels. Uh, these two by four panels were you know perfect on on both sides. So yeah, but I like my creative spaces to be simple. Uh, yeah, clean. I, I you know I. If, it, if a place is cluttered or, you know, overly complicated... Cables I, everywhere. Yeah, I don't feel creative. And I'm the exact same way. Maybe that sounds silly, but, you know, I, I like things to just be sleek. Um, you know, puts my mind at ease, so it gives me a little bit more space to, to move around in ideas. Um, yeah. And I also wanted this to feel like a hang spot. We can come in here and put movies on, you know, the on the mains. And when uh, my partner Ruby takes our dog out in the backyard, you know, I can, I can mess with her and throw her balls from up here. <laughs> so it's, it's nice to have it so integrated in the home life. I mean, it's it's really a point of no turn, no return for me. What's the background? Are you, uh, you play? I do. Uh, these days, multi instrumentalist, just by necessity, uh, it's gotten there. But I grew up as a guitar player, playing in bands. Uh, what kind of stuff? Playing clubs downtown in Cleveland, Ohio, where I, where I grew up. A lot of rock bands, you know, some sort of hip hop, jazz groove stuff. Whoa! But also, uh, but mostly rock. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a as a kid, you just want to turn up an amp. Yeah, you want to hear that distortion, power chords. Totally. Well, you got a sweet collection of guitars here. Here, you've been collecting ever since then. Yep, for years. Um, and this is, it's sort of a Swiss Army knife uh, by design. So for scoring and, you know, writing tracks in all different genres, you, you don't really ever know what you're going to do until you're asked to do it. So these are all really carefully picked to give you everything, all, all different types of tones. You know, the tellies do the telly sound, uh, electrics with humbuckers, uh, hollow bodies, all different types of uh, pickup tones and hollow body bass with flat wound strings, solid. Uh, body P bass with round wounds to completely different tones 
Um, the Collings D2H acoustic is gives you that really nice, clear, hi-fi acoustic sound. Mm -hmm. And then the Waterloo is that you know old school like Willie Nelson type of tone. Have a high-strung natural tuning steel string, and then two different types of nylon string acoustics. One is a classical side size, and then I have a like a three-quarter size concert. Uh, this is actually the guitar that I started on. This was oh, wow. in my uh, parents' basement growing up. This was my dad's guitar, and it, this one actually records beautifully because it's uh, not too... Nylon string guitars can get a little murky and mm -hmm. thick, but that one has a really nice, clear... Uh, I don't say bright, but it's like articulate. Yeah. So it records really well. And then banjo, Gretsch New Yorker mandolin, which is also electric, has a pickup in it that you can run quarter inch into, into a guitar, pedals, and get crazy. I have lap steel with flat wounds. So we can find, you know, in the string department, we can find any, any sound that I'm going for really quickly. Uh, two very different sounding tube amps. Uh, and these are, there's a speaker out that hits this uh, Palmer speaker simulator box. That sounds incredible. At some po point, I'll probably move up to the UA aux to have more flexibility, but um, I do that in other ways too, so I can, this takes like a filtered out, gives the speaker sound that can then uh, hit the Heritage Neve style pre's. Uh, but then I can also run line out of this into a DI and then use you know, speaker sims in the computer to get different tones. That's cool. So you got all the guitars, amps, and then you got a sweet little pedal set up here. How does the pedal integrate? You go straight into the amp or? Uh, we can do a couple different things. Yeah, so I usually run out to the amp rig and then take a split through a Brent Averill DI to then go uh, DI because sometimes I writing sessions for an album or TV, you're like going from the idea to the execution like immediately. So I like to cover my ass and uh, sometimes, you know, you lay it down quick and it's like in, in the performance is right, but maybe it's not quite the tone I wanted or, or decide I, I want something different later. So where's that BAE DI? I want to see, I want to see that. Uh, right down there. Oh, wow. Okay. So that lives down there and that'll, uh, hit the Neve. Nice. I've like hit the end of my road in here uh, with what I can do without a patch bay. Yeah. I've always liked to keep signal path super clean, but now I've hit the point where I'm like, I want to do things that, you know, I'm, I'm tired of going underneath every, oh, one, right. every yeah. once in a while. So, which I don't have to do that often. Uh, you know, everything is patched, ready to go. I have pre's and the prism sound uh, converters. Uh, they sound unbelievable. Prism Sound is my interface. Uh, that's the A to D and D to A converter and uh, word clock. So these are incredible. Uh, my coworker Eric turned me on to these and they're like mastering grade yeah. uh, converters. Amazing for tracking and mixing. It has a really full sound and, and, and wide stereo field. Mm -hmm. I've compared that to a lot of the Lavery converters and some other, you know, really high-end stuff, and it wasn't subtle. It was like, you know, even between other converters that are no slouches, where they mm -hmm. were all really strong, that one stood out uh, undeniably to me. Wow, that's awesome. Fuller bottom, wider picture. I wasn't even in the market for it, but then I heard it and I was like, "There's, n I can't, not." Yeah, that's tough yeah. when you. That's you gotta be careful when you walk into situations where you start checking out stuff that you're not in the market for, because- Have instant recall. You might just fall into that market. <laughs> <laughs> that happened with the Manly. The Very Mew, yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah, that, so that's the Manly Very Mew stereo compressor limiter. Yep, and so this lives with the uh, TK bus compressor as well in my mix chain for my analog summing. You know, I don't have a ton of outboard gear, but everything is very, carefully chosen and designed for for its use. When I mix songs for records, uh, I send stem pairs out to the Rupert Neve summing that hits the TK Audio Bus Compressor and the Manly Very Mew. So at any point I can bypass uh, either one in A, B, do I want to go solid state, you know, uh, SSL type of bus compression or do I want something to be? And so I can ABM really quickly, 
And then sometimes it's both uh, set very differently. You can get, you know, a little bit of that peak punch from the SSL mm -hmm. and then do some leveling and warmth from the Verimu. So you got the pre's, what's the black line audio thing? Is that a compressor? Yeah, so that's that's two, two compressors in one. So like the 1176 LA2 thing? Exactly, so 1176 on the left, LA2A optical tube on the right. This I specifically got for tracking, so channel one of the Heritage Neve hits this in, in series. So I like to go 76, uh, 1176 circuit first, you know, fast attack and release just grabbing the little peaks, and then that goes into the LA-2A for leveling and a little bit of warmth and tone. And uh, so I track through that. And nice. I like to get sounds you know, as close as I can as it goes to the recording. That's been giving me a really, really great vocal sound that I've been searching for for a long time. Sometimes we'll, we'll cut in here, and I've done horns and a bunch of stuff in here, but then uh, I also have this attached booth Oh, yeah. nice. So this is the master bedroom with the bathroom. So uh, we turned the whole walk-in closet into a treated booth. And this is really nice. So all the walls and ceiling are treated with acoustic treatments. Again, this is all GIK acoustics. Got some nice storage under here for extra stands and stuff like that. Just move this panel and I got extra storage. But again, I like to keep things clean. I don't sure. want to be looking at that stuff when we're creating. So we have some extra vibe lighting options that I can turn on with different full uh, spectrum of colors and yeah so makes it feel less like a closet it's really nice it's, I, I have never thought of uh, like a booth with shelves in it yeah so, I so it's, it's I actually it's kind of cool because you don't feel like you're in the booth necessarily right and you, you got feel like you're in a room other stuff to kind of distract your your brain with what's this mic so this is a Wonder Audio CM7, uh, which is now a CM7 Suprema, their, their big daddy top mic, um, even though it's in the body of a CM7 GT. Um, Mike Castoro at Wonder Audio uh, did all the mods for me and brought it up to the all specs and parts internally of the Suprema. So, um, cool. but, but I still have the benefit of having all polar patterns with uh, the GT mod, because with the Suprema you only have uh, Cardioid and, and the Omni, but I can get Figure 8 and Hyper and all that stuff in between. Uh, this is our main vocal tracking mic. I'll even cut acoustic guitars with it and some horn stuff with it. Ruby uh, plays uh, alto sax and clarinet too, so we do a lot of horn and woodwind arrangements in our songs. Cut a lot of that stuff in here and or out in the main room with this, but she jokes that this is like my purse wall of camera bags. <laughs> oh, nice, yeah. Yeah, see, I see you got some cameras in here too. Yep, definitely into cameras and uh, film and digital. Big uh, thing for me and during COVID, I, I threw myself in into it deep. And I have some photographer friends in Chicago that took me under their wing and showed me all that stuff. And I just, you know, when all music making came to a halt, needed to put it somewhere and uh, got way into photography, so that was blast for me and then you know now it's nice to have because we'll shoot our own record covers and and do some of our own videos as well so definitely nice to have a little bit of know-how in that department it's been a really comfortable space fun for us and other artists that we've had over here it was, it was nice for me to hear but even though it wasn't really conscious but they've all said that they feel more comfortable in this room than uh, their home studios or a lot of other studios they've been to just because it it, it kind of gives you the best of all worlds, you know, it's, it, it feels homey, but also very productive and professional and a lot of natural light keeps you fresh. Where can um, people follow you or reach out to you about doing sessions and writing and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's super easy. My name is Colin Sipus and it's colinsipus.com, uh, 1L. And uh, also my Instagram was mostly what I use. Uh, I'm not too active on Facebook or anything else. Uh, and that's also at Colin Sipus. All right, well, I'll put links to that down in the description. Everyone go give them a follow, shoot them some messages or whatever. If you're in East Nashville, uh, hit them up, and Thanks. we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Hey, I wanted to let you know that you can actually subscribe to this channel. It's so easy. It's free. You literally can just subscribe to the channel. And the great thing about it is YouTube will continue to show you more 
videos like this where we go through people's stuff, basically. They invite us into their amazing studios and workspaces and we get to just see how they have everything set up and steal all of their brilliant ideas and use them for ourselves. It's, it's one of my favorite things to do. I actually, I literally, in this video, there's this table that Colin has that I bought before I left and I, I set it up in another video. Anyway, I'm sitting at it right now, it's awesome. But anyway, 